The Chiapa 1911-22. Let's check it out. The Chiapa 1911-22. This is a replica of the 1911, and it looks and feels just like a standard government model uh, 1911-45, but yet it shoots 22 long rifle. We're going to safety check the pistol. No magazine. No rounds in the chamber. Now, the proper way to pronounce this is not Chiapa or Chiapa. It's Chiapa, like K-E-Y-A-P-P-A. And it's an Italian word, and so I hear a lot of people pronouncing it wrong, which, to be honest with you, when I first looked at that, what came to mind was Chia Pet. Chiapa released the Model 1911-22 in 2009, and they've become a very popular firearm in 22 Rimfire. The 1911 was a U.S. government-issued sidearm from 1911 to 1985, being replaced by the M9 Beretta. It has the same feel as a standard 1911, it weighs two pounds, whereas a Colt government model weighs just about two and a half pounds. But it's very minimal difference. It really has some good heft to it. The walnut grips really set off the very nice satin finish. On the slide itself, it has model 1911-22, and then it has the Chiapa Firearms Limited. And these are actually made in Italy, but they're distributed out of Dayton, Ohio. But of course, having all the same controls of your 1911 with your thumb safety, you have your slide stop, the way your hammer functions. With 22 rimfire or any rimfire, you don't want to pull the trigger on an empty cylinder because of the way the firing pin hits the corner of your rimfire cartridge and what it'll end up doing is damaging the firearm if you dry fire. So whenever you do, make sure you grab hold of the hammer before you let it down. Of course, being single action, you're getting no action here. You have to pull the hammer back for the first shot. It does have 10-shot magazines. Now, the magazines are a polymer magazine. In fact, when you first pick them up, they seem really cheap, uh, but they do function very well. Uh, one of the things that I noticed was they didn't always hold my slide back. But as far as reliability, these work very well. There is a small little detent here that's brass, and you can grab it to be able to load your magazine by grabbing hold of it. One of the magazines, in fact, it's this one, was recessed a lot farther in, and I couldn't grab it. But it's real easy to go ahead and just load the rounds right in the top. The magazine slides in very easily and when you depress the mag release because these are polymer you're going to have to pull them out and of course extra magazines are available uh, you can get them from Kiapa or other sources and I even found these on eBay they're running about the 15 16 dollar range really nice wood grips that really make a nice contrast between the finish and the grip themselves uh, they're laser etched very high quality has the CF right here for Kiapa firearms and then with the diamond pattern the grip screws are torque screws. The grip safety is just a dummy safety. It doesn't function. In fact, the internals of this pistol are totally different than the 1911, and we're going to look at that when we break it down. The sights are standard GI sights, but they do have a model with Novak sights, and they have a target model. And I'm going to tell you guys, this is a really accurate pistol, which obviously we're going to look at too when we go to the range. Now, I've seen the Kiapa 1911s for around the 250 to 275 range with the basic model and to me you can't even get a conversion kit for your government model to go on your pistol so why not go ahead and have a full dedicated pistol to 22 now one of the things about this being a training pistol too is that it has a very soft spring for the recoil spring so you're getting a lot more force 
coming back. And what that does, it simulates a little more of your muzzle rise and a little more of the recoil. You don't have the recoil, but it does simulate it. And so it gives you a better training tool than, say, the Mark II Ruger, which stays right on target as fast as you pull the trigger. This gives you a little more uh, simulation for training if you carry a 1911. Now, the frame and the slide are made from a, an alloy, probably a zinc alloy. And Chiapa calls it the Chiapa alloy. Now you do see there's a steel insert in the barrel. Many of the parts, including this barrel bushing, your safety, and there are other steel features, your hammer, and some of the internal parts that are going to receive a lot of wear. Now not having a grip safety, your only safety is right here. This is your manual safety, but it does have a lock here. And it has a little prong that actually will turn and will lock down your firing pin. And this will keep it, if you have it in storage, for someone to grab it, or you have small children and you want to keep it in the lock position, this will keep this gun inoperable. There is a simulated mainspring housing with serrations, but this is just for looks. The front of the grip is completely smooth, and the frame itself. And you can look at the quality of the finish of this pistol. It has a really nice satin finish to it. Now this was actually second hand. In fact, I got this from a really good friend of mine at the gun show this weekend, and he had guns out on his table, and I had a gun to trade, and I just laid it out on the table, and when I got ready to leave, he said, hey, I want you to take a look at this little 22." And so he and I traded for this little pistol. So this is not a brand new from the factory pistol. And I have heard some issues about trigger pull and how it's very stiff. This trigger pull on this pistol in particular is really smooth. Now one of the things that I have heard is that because of the way this trigger is set up, that once you use it and it kind of gets broken in, it goes from a seven or eight pound trigger down to about a five to four and a half pound trigger. And I definitely think that that's where this is now. But one of the things I want to show you about the trigger, of course the gun is unloaded. This almost has a two stage trigger. And I'm going to hold the hammer because I don't want to dry fire the pistol. But as I pull the trigger, there's a little bit of slack right here. And then the gun breaks. And really, it has a really nice trigger. One of the things you're going to look when we break this down is it has a fixed barrel system. And fixed barrels typically are very accurate. Not bad at 15 yards. And that's with the standard 1911 sights. Now to break the pistol down, we're gonna go ahead and put it on safety and this is gonna hold the slide in place. And then we're gonna push in the recoil guide rod plug and we're gonna turn the barrel bushing holding the plug. And once we do that, it releases the plug and the tension on the spring. Then we're gonna just go ahead and pull our plug out, pull our spring out, and then we're gonna pull our bushing loose. Right here at the back of the bushing, there are some locking lugs that hold this into place until you turn it. Now we're going to go ahead and bring out the recoil guide rod, and as you can see immediately, this is a lot different than the 1911. Slide stop can go ahead and be removed right now. Uh, again, this is not the same as a the 1911. Then bring your slide to the rear position and lift up from the back, and then let it move forward. Here you see the fixed barrel design. So this isn't taking a 1911 and trying to retrofit it with a 22. It's building up from the ground floor with a 22 in mind and then building the 1911 around that system. And of course the fixed barrel design is well proven of course with the Walther series pistols and many others for years. This has been an excellent design and again very accurate. And this is all you need to do to field strip the pistol. You'll notice that the slide is really lightweight. The frame has all the heft to it. And, of course, that's very necessary because with 22, you're going to have low pressures that are going to force the slide back. And then with this low power spring, again, it gives a little bit of feel of the recoil of the 1911, but yet without all the recoil. Now, right in your slide stop, the recoil guide rod actually fits right here, and that's what locks it into place. And, of course, the spring pressure is pushing on it. Now, you can see at the bottom of the frame that hole, and that's where your recoil guide rod goes right into that hole like so. Now to reassemble we're going to go into reverse order so go ahead and put your slide on. 
when you get it all the way back you're gonna need to push it down and that actually pushes the hammer the hammers pushing up on the slide to get it into the rails and then I go ahead and put my safety on drop in the slide stop we're gonna to want to make sure we get that nub though into that hole put your barrel bushing on and you want to go in sideways when you're replacing your recoil spring guide plug make sure that you have these little notches at three o'clock nine o'clock and six o'clock and that this is a smooth area because this is going to fit into your barrel bushing like so and that's what holds it into place then check for function and you're good to go if your guide rod isn't fitting into the slide stop you're going to know it because the slide won't return once you assemble it if it's locked up then just go ahead and remove your barrel bushing pull out your recoil guide rod and make sure that that silver guide rod is placed into the hole very simple very nice design now if you happen to have one of these and you're having some kind of feeding issues a couple of things you want to check for one thing when you're holding the pistol you want to make sure that your wrist is in a solid position if you're allowing your wrist to kind of flex or you're allowing your elbow to flex what's going to happen is not going to allow for the recoil to feed this slide and to pick up the next round you're going to have stove pipes you're going to have failures to feed that's because of this system even if you do that with a 1911 it can cause what they call limp wristing uh, especially with glocks as well it can cause problems you need to hold that wrist in a firm position also be careful that you don't inadvertently put your thumb up next to the slide when it's moving because this can also drag on the slide and cause malfunctions now it's recommended to use high performance 22 ammunition I use the CCI mini mags which are some of the highest velocity on the market you use bulk ammo you may get varied results if you find the right loads though sometimes even in pistols like this will function using a good bulk load but I stuck with the CCI mini mags I'd read a lot of things both negative and positive about these pistols but as far as my experience it was very positive Alright, there's a 10 yard group. I knew I pulled this one at the bottom, but it's pretty much hitting right in this area. Overall, I'm very pleased with the way this pistol performed. I think that a few of the things that happened were actually my fault by not really holding a steady grip and allowing my thumb to interfere with the slide. So I really am looking forward to shooting this some more. And, you know, I had no idea what to expect. Now, I'll be updating future results of feeding and anything that's going on with this pistol, which I do with all my other firearms. If there's something that I want to update or put on, I do it on my Facebook page, which is Such Fun Gun Reviews. And I'll have the link, of course, down below in the description. But check it out. Like the page. And a lot of times I'll go ahead and put upcoming reviews on my Facebook page of things I'm doing. So check out Such Fun Gun Reviews Facebook page and hit the like button. You can check out all the different models at KiapaFirearms.com. The Kiapa 1911-22. An excellent option for training, for plinking, even for small game. They not only have a number of models of the 1911-22, but they also have a replica of the Beretta M9 pistol in 22 and they also have the rhino revolver which is a really unique design plus other firearms so check out kiapafirearms.com and for a price of around 250 to 275 dollars it's really hard to beat it be strong be of good courage god bless america long live the republic
you want the smooth side to be at the top. Oops. And that's with the standard low profile, and that's with the standard 1911 grips. And this alloy is actually named the Kiapa, and it's called the Kiapa alloy. This alloy is called the Kia. This is also a brand new version of the Chia.